This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Not just any Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast today. Do we have any sound effects? Like the ding, maybe, or just something? <laughs> it is. Any, I know we can't use music. See, aren't you glad I didn't do a podcast when you were gone yesterday? Because yes. today. Today is the day. January 13th, 2023. The 300th episode of Mark and Charity Mornings. Should mention too, Friday the 13th. Yeah. At that. We pitched the idea and we said, do you think it'll take? And they said, (laughs) nobody is going to want to listen to you, clowns. Regardless, we're still here 300 shows later. Thank you, everybody in the Quinty region for listening, and that one listener in Brazil and the one in Germany. Who yes, thank every you. We get crazy stats around the world. You know what? World. It's not quantity, it's quality. That's what we like to think. <laughs> That's what we like to think. Don't know if it shows up, but we like to think about that. Hey, hey. so I've been away the last two days. How's it been? It's been okay. Tell us about Harry Potter and oh the Cursed Child. Oh, my gosh. Child. It was amazing. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So oh, amazing, I start ripping apart the studio. <laughs> it was really good. It was way too long, but it was really was good. Was it? Now, do you say it's that three because... Three and a half hours. Okay, but it, 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 oh. it was less interesting because it was too there long? There were... I thought there were parts that didn't need to be in it. Ah, it needed to be There edited. were maybe one or two scenes I thought, mm, okay. Yeah, dragging it out. We don't need this. When it's three and a half hours, mm-hmm. I get it if it was two hours, sure, throw it in. But yeah. when it's three and a half hours, and it's a good... Like, the rest of it was really good and captivating. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to throw in these. J.K. Rowling things. didn't write junk. She was a very good writer. She was. Still an is. Excellent, is an yeah. excellent writer. But, yes, Tremendous. it was very well done. I know your daughter has seen it several times. And yeah. I thought of that. I was watching it, and I was thinking, would this be a show I would come back and see? And, yes, it would. Mm-hmm. Because it's... It's full of magic. There were things in there, and, and it was the first show we did, my boys had, have gone to. I love going to the theater. Love musical theater, but theater in general. Yep. Love going to see shows, especially in Toronto. And I've been wanting to take the boys because I love it so much. I really wanted them to experience it, but I was waiting for the right show. This was the right show. Right. Ben got antsy for the three and a half hours. Couldn't blame him because it's a long time. I was getting antsy. But he enjoyed it. Nathan... This was the highlight. Loved it. Light goes on. Yeah. The light has come on. I said, would you go see another one? I said, not, maybe not Harry Potter, but like another show. Yes, mom. Yeah. Absolutely. Like he was right into it from the, from the moment it started. Just captivated. A couple of great. years, Sterling Theater. You got a summer. You got you got a summer. We volunteer. have talked about that. We've yeah, talked about sure. their kids programs during March break, and Find in the out. summer. I don't know if he's necessarily a performer, but it was the magic of the theater. Trying to figure out because, especially with Harry Potter and other shows I've seen, like Phantom, how they drop the chandelier. Yeah. But yep. with Harry Potter, with it being a magic show, there were elements that were like. How do they do that? So yeah. every every so often he'd lean over. He's like, Mom, how did they do that? I'm like, I don't know how they did that. My daughter has a working relationship with Mervish. Yes. So uh, she knows then how they did a lot of it. And she was uh, speaking with somebody after seeing it. And I said, well, I think that part was done with drones. I think that's how they did that part. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, so Steph mentioned that to her. Is it done with drones? She said, no, it's real people. It's like, then how do you do it? Mm-hmm. So I can't tell you, but that's real people. And I'm the like, part that wow. you're talking about... It was real people because they had a malfunction. Okay. They had a hiccup during production. See, I'm glad then. Yes. The, the, right before the intermission. Yes. Yeah. There so. was a hiccup. And at first you weren't sure, but then when a secondary person comes out and opens their cape so you can't really see. Yeah. It's like, okay, I don't think that's supposed to be happening right, right. now. But it was still fantastic. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yes, but now, right before our intermission, one very week good. today, that was a Christmas present for you, right? It was, yes. One Christmas present for my today, mom. One week today... My wife and I will be going to see Joseph in the Technicolor <gasps> Dreamcoat in Oh, Toronto, see, that's what I mean, the which music. Is, oh, my Which gosh. is probably up there, mm-hmm. if not my favorite. Yeah. Because, I mean, Phantom is just ridiculously yeah. great. You ask anybody, Phantom's and always one of the top I did ones. mornings in Stratford for 10 years, so you go see professional plays. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get spoiled yes. after a while. Um, but to be able to, when I, we heard Joseph was coming back, our daughter, because she works with Mervish, said, I'm going to need tickets to my parents for Christmas. Here's my wallet. <laughs> <And> you just <laughs> take him away. And uh, she found a Friday night. 
Nice. And so there it is. So, Do you remember the very first it. show you went to? Like ever, ever? Yeah. Ever? No, I don't. Because I really when I, don't. of course, I put pictures up of us at the theater, and um, one of my friends commented, she's like, what a great experience for the kids. Yeah. Because my nieces came too. She said, hopefully this is something they remember. I remember... And I do too, because I remember the first show I went to, my parents took us to see Cats. And honestly, there are two. there's only two things I remember about that show. The eyes. Did you ever see Cats? No. So the beginning, the opening of the show are these eyes, glowing eyes running up and down the aisle. So the actors are running up and down the aisle and all you see are these yellow cat eyes. Yeah. Scared the crap out of my <laughs> sister and I. Because I was maybe, I want to say six or seven. Yeah. And Cats is kind of... Cats is an interesting one to take young kids to, but we were quite young. I remember that, and I remember hearing Memory, the first time hearing Memory, the song. Yep. And that's where the light bulb went on for me. So I'm hoping that that happened with Nathan, if not both of them, this weekend. And they do remember that. You don't remember, really? I don't, your first... I don't remember the first one, because I've lived okay, a long Okay, what's the first life. one you remember, then? I don't even know. Really? I don't, I, you You've know, just seen so many. You're just so worldly, I wonder Mark. if it wasn't when I was in <laughs> high school, because there were no plays in Toronto anybody went to, and I lived in Windsor and London. But I think in high school, we went to Stratford, and it was one of the Richard III's or whatever, yeah. and it was boring yeah. it was some of them you know, for a high school <laughs> um but i i here's the thing i do remember my first okay so for you it was music yes. the first thought that struck me was how do they remember all these lines oh, okay i thought they would literally walk around with scripts and act out play that's what i thought plays were i didn't think they could actually perform by memory mm -hmm. that's crazy so the professionalism of a live Stage play is what struck me. And maybe that's what led down this kind of like this performance radio thing that's, hmm, you know, that's that's a kind of a special talent. And boy, what a skill to be able to do oh, that. Oh, it's incredible. And then it's I incredible. found out in high school that I had a public speaking ability. Yeah, where I didn't fear <laughs> being in front of a crowd and before I know it. So yep. that part of it's like, and then I don't know, I have a great memory, apparently. So remembering so why lines aren't you was acting? easy. I don't know. I don't know why. I do every day. <laughs> I come in here and I get up. <laughs> True enough. And I pretend this I'm is happy. A stage. Yeah, that's right. Totally different from anything. Hey, I'm seen. Catholic. My parents wanted me to be a priest, and I said, "Wait a minute! Fifteen minutes of mic time a week, one sermon. Mm -hmm. When I can have a three-hour show every morning, and a podcast, and weekends. Not to mention denying women my <laughs> love. That would be a sin. <laughs> oh, God, work. So anyway. <sighs> So yeah, so it was a good time. So that was that. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, and then we went to the old spaghetti factory. My favorite on the Esplanade. My favorite. I think favorite. it's a favorite for many. Again, was it <laughs> trying to... Actually, it wasn't. We got there at the right time. I'm glad we made reservations, though. But it's one of those memories that I'm trying to push on my kids. Because you build it up, right? And you do. It's a favorite of mine. Yeah. My sister remembers it. My parents, we've gone, we've gone there a lot. And so you try to instill that in your kids, like, oh, yeah, we're going to the spaghetti. And they're like, oh, do they only serve spaghetti? I'm like, yeah, they only serve I said, no, they'll have other things. Yeah, okay. come on. You can have lasagna. You can have chicken parm. And come you on. walk in, and there's all that stained glass. And and I know you've talked about the streetcar, but you talk about, like, for me, it's the carousel, the horses. And you yeah. look around the colors and just being in there. And it's still quite nice, but the kids are like, nah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, okay. What is with that? Then them? I feel old because I'm like, you don't know. You don't you know. You don't know you how don't great know. this place is. <laughs> you don't know. The Sitting memories. There with your grandmother. I like, know. This, this is, is, this such is a it. thing. You need to enjoy this. Appreciate this. <laughs> and but it was the first time. So. You're pissed you can't have chicken nuggets? Like, come on. No, they have chicken nuggets. Oh, then there you go. The so they were about. all happy. They got their chicken nuggets. Excellent. But yeah, it was, I, it was a great day. It was, it was so much fun. I love going to the city. It was really neat. The kids got there. And again, I thought of your daughter because um, it, they're becoming aware more, I think, of the surroundings. Because when we get off, we're walking around. They're like, Mom, are those apartments? Do people live? I said, yeah, people well, live right down here. It's not just, it's not just a, um, uh, a tourist attraction. It's not just somewhere we Business. go yeah. to enjoy events at the CN Tower or ball game or a hockey. Like it's, it, people live here too. And that idea, again, you could see it, especially on Nathan's face. He's like, wow, that would be really cool. 
Mm-hmm. I'm like, it would be really cool to live down yeah. here. It's not for me. So but, hey. expensive. <laughs> I thought of your, yeah, I thought of your daughter. And Hi, I'm like, Dad. yeah. Yeah. But there is that excitement to being in the city, yeah. right? And the lights yeah. and the action and everything going on. Yeah, not for everybody. Great place to visit. Yep. Love it. Yep. But happy to be home. Yeah. Anyway, well, that's great. Yeah, good it yours. was a good a good couple of days. Good for the kids. Mm-hmm. What else was going on? What, what was, was going on here? About? I don't know what was going on. I think that was about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm so glad because yesterday I thought, do I do a podcast? What a waste of a 300th episode that would have been. It would have been me like waxing on for about four minutes. Charity's back tomorrow. Well, a and let down. I thought for the 300th show, because we were talking about it last week a bit, just to go through some of the shows we've done. It's, I, <laughs> as we joke about it, it has been pretty interesting. It's been fun to listen back. Some of the guests we've had. Oh, yeah, for some sure. Some of the things we've done, the interviews, because a lot of what we do on the air ends up here, too. But there's also been the times where it hasn't been on the air. It's just been Well, here. because we like, we didn't talk about you being in Toronto today, because that kind of goes on, and it's mm-hmm. a little a But little some of our guests, you can kind of dive into it a little bit more, yep. get, a, get some more of the background. And it's been very interesting these last couple of years doing the podcast. It's been in, quite enjoyable. Uh, it's, a, it's a whole new animal, which I knew. Um, but it kind of, does it change the way you broadcast on the radio? I think it has because doing this allows me to be more relaxed. We're not on a time constraint. We aim to be about 15 minutes. I don't know the last time we were 15 minutes. It's tend to, it's, it's gotten a little bigger. Goodbye everybody. (laughs) Um, but when we're on, when we're doing the show, like the morning show on the air live, there's that time constraint. We only have so much time to get everything in and it's a lot more of mm-hmm. um well at least I try not to talk over you and we have points we have to hit and things we have to say and things we can't say. This allows a little more relaxation and I think not sincerity or on not that we're not honest on the air, but maybe a little truer truer self yeah. as well. Well it's relaxed. Yeah. yeah. Um I find that when I think of things we're going to do on the air, which I've done for 35 years, I, I guess I'm a little bit like uh, Jerry Seinfeld, though not talented. <laughs> I'm not talented <laughs> like him. But his thing is he always says he is never 100% present wherever he is. Like if he's at a restaurant with his family, he's there, you know, 95%. 5% of him is looking around for the next story. For bits. Yeah, he's like, okay, I'm here doing this. What can I take back from this onto the air? My point is, so there's there's always been that little bit of me that we do a three-hour show and the other 21 hours is show prep. Mm-hmm. Trying to, but now there's a part of me that says, oh, I'm not going to use that on the air, but that would be great on the podcast. I now find I filter things differently. Or things that I, that I went, that's ah, interesting, but it wouldn't fit on air. I now know mm-hmm. I have an outlet mm-hmm. to say, oh, you know what? And I go back to a guy like Joe Reed with the buses. We didn't spend a lot of time with that on the air. What what could we do? Did we even put that on the air? I don't even think we did. I think it was just a podcast. Right. So it was like an opportunity to say, here's something really kind of neat. And and I know we've done that before when we have artists and performers who come to the Empire Theater. Mm -hmm. We'll spend 10 minutes with them, which is great, and only give like a snippet snippet on the air. air. We don't have a lot. Um, you know, and I go back to the great chat you had with Gallon this week. I didn't put on the air that Gallon literally thought you were Charity Brown. The okay, singer. I wondered if you included that because I, I left it I and I sent you a note saying that it's there. I yeah. just didn't know what to do with it. I I couldn't he tell. Genuinely thought I, I was... genuinely thought. I think he does. I think he thought he was talking to Charity Brown. He did. And he totally did. <laughs> and and again, I'm I'm not sure if you're just the sweetest person. Or if you just wanted the ego boost, you you didn't dissuade thought, of that at all. Well, and I should have kept it running, but I stopped it because we said goodbye. But I thought he was teasing me. I honestly <laughs> thought <laughs> during that conversation, he was teasing me. I, I thought he knew I wasn't her. I couldn't possibly be her. <laughs> Number one, she was a singer from the 70s. I wasn't born until like late 70s. Um, but... <laughs> I thought he was teasing because people do. People have teased me in the past. I told yeah. you about my first day at Loyalist, John Henderson calling me up. He's like, which one of you were Charity Brown? And making that connection. And through my career, and I said this to Gowan afterwards, everybody has teased me about, oh, you look really great for your age, yeah. <laughs> making that connection. So I thought that's what he was doing. He was just playing it up. Yeah. And it wasn't until we were done recording and he kept going on. <laughs> And I said, um, I'm actually not her. I said, what? I said, no. I said, that's my real name. 
no connection to her whatsoever. I'm not related to her. My parents weren't fans. It's just purely <laughs> coincidental that my name is the same as the 70s singer. Yeah. Are you, and he was mortified. He was absolutely mortified. He kept apologizing to me up and I'm like, seriously, no, it's fine. People do it all the time. It's totally yeah. fine. I love it. And you're gallant. We're going to keep it. Yeah. We're going to keep it. We'll play it up. Don't worry about it. But I thought he was teasing me. I yeah. didn't really think he I honestly, cut it off but he before did. then because it would have been better if you were here to tell the uh, yeah. story. Otherwise, it would have just been me going, I don't know, because I wasn't on the interview. But oh my gosh, yeah. that was so no, good. No, he thought I was. Yeah. And probably the only person who genuinely thought I was ever, ever. <laughs> but so, I guess I need no, to I meet him in stuff. person. <laughs> I love when we have guests on and we get a chance to spend more time. Like I said, it's just a little bit more casual. And we do that. When we interview somebody that we know is for the podcast, not on air, Yes, we tend to delve a little bit more into it. Carrie Durant keeps coming to mind. Yeah. He's been one we've talked to a few times, a local um, hockey guy, heavily involved in coaching again, was doing a fundraiser to gather uh, equipment for kids in need, hockey equipment, but also had has quite an interesting past. He was one of the students not students, one of the kids from Maple Leaf Gardens. Mm -hmm. And um, hearing his story, like you said, we we didn't dive into it quite as much as we did on the air. Again, we aired a snippet and then featured the whole story on our podcast. And I just think back to that particular chat with him, how interesting, but also heartbreaking to hear. It was was very interesting talking to him. And then the time on air, yeah, it, it... It limits the impact that a story like that can have. So I'm grateful to have the outlet to say, if this interests you, there is an opportunity for you to hear the whole story. And we've got it Because you don't want to rush through it. You want the time to to talk to him and let him share it and, and, and ask him questions. And to have it on air, as I, as we've said, just, with the time constraints, just yep. doesn't always the most allow time us. we talk with, especially community people on there with events, it's like what, when, where, how. Exactly. And then good luck, off you go. Give Make us the mind. points. And, and we're happy and to do it. We, and, yep. you know, and we, we know the formula. We got it down. Two and a half minutes, got it, great. But to be able to spend a little bit more time, because some of the stories do require more explanation, like your friend from Campbellford who went over to Ukraine, and he went twice. Oh, yeah, John, yes. John, that was uh, an amazing story. How do you explain why you would want to go over to a war zone or at least to the border of the war Mm -hmm. zone and help refugees get somewhere else in Europe when you live in Campbellford and run a brewery. So that's not a two minute chat. No, and then absolutely what not. did you what hoops did you have to go through and what did you learn? And so to have this kind of an outlet to be able to share bigger stories and greater mm-hmm. depth with people across the Quinty region is I suppose it's a responsibility to get all waxing poetic. Uh, just kind of spend this time a little bit more. Yeah, we can yokel around, but we've I was just gonna say, then there's some, the other side where we just we we do. Are. We just joke around and do silly yeah. games and astrological things. <laughs> points one that are one made day and... we'll have a sponsor. For 300 shows, we haven't made a dime for the company. But they like it, so. Well, and right. I'd like to think we have fun with it, too. I don't think we would do it if we didn't enjoy it. I know I enjoy it. It's, it's another way to, yeah, to communicate and connect with everyone, yeah. which is great. So thank you, everybody, for downloading and for listening. And if this is your first one. First 299, we're a lot like this. <laughs> Other well, than as ones we, we pointed mentioned, out, a few highlighted. You might want yeah, to go back and have a listen back. to. Terry Duran and uh, John Graham, is it? John Graham. John. Joanna Allen was another one that jumps in. She's the one that went over for the Queen's funeral. Yes. That was oh, also really interesting to speak wow. to her, too. She was to, amazing. For, she is a great storyteller. That's another one you should listen to if you haven't yet already. Yeah, so go back and check out some of those and have yourself a uh, great weekend. Our football picks are ready to go. You and I only differ on one of the six this weekend. I know. Emily's differing two with you. Mm -hmm. Cole and you seem to be on the same page. And Cole and I are the same. Yep, so it's going to be an interesting weekend how the four of us come in on Monday. Who will be, because there's only one game between Mark and I, that'll be the game that, who will be the winner? If Seattle knocks off San Francisco in game one. I'm done. All yeah, all bets are off for everybody. It'll yeah. just be a free for all. I was gonna go with Seattle until you started talking about San Fran, and then oh well, if Mark's on San Fran, I should probably. Mm. So you're right. If something happens, they won me my fantasy football pool. San Fran. 
the well, players we'll see how it and goes. their defense. Great and, prize up for grabs if oh, you haven't man. entered yet. Get to our website, 955hitsfm.ca. A, uh, I love this uh, $250 gift card to Belleville's M&M Food Market, which is great, 149 Bell Boulevard, and a 75-inch LG NanoCell LED 4K <laughs> UHD oh my OMG. Gosh. There are so many letters and numbers TV. in there. <laughs> yeah. And it comes with a warning, must be under 21 to operate. <laughs> Must have, yes, you'd have to be. Must have a millennial to help set it up. Uh, 75 inch. Oh, it's so good. Oh, my gosh. Can you so imagine how God. big? But that would be like, it's, what, oh. two of those panes? Maybe that, three? I think that's a 50 inch TV on our wall that we have up oh. here. Let's throw another two feet past that. Mm. And, and, of course, then up because it's 75 it's corner to corner. TV. Large, larger than I need in my house. Oh, my so. gosh. So, so good. Amazing. So It's like you're there. In. It's like you're in the picture. Yeah. When you're watching something, you're in it. Yep. You're watching Die Hard at Christmas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There it is. 75 inch <laughs> TV. Hey, have a great uh, Friday the 13th, everybody. A lot of snow today in the area. Be careful with your driving, but it's going to clear up on the weekend. We're back at it again on Monday, which is Blue Monday. Mm-hmm. Monday is said to be... The third Monday of January. Yep, yep. The most depressing day of the year. So by saying it, we dispel it. That's okay. the way I like to say. Forewarned, forearmed. Gotcha. It's because, Let's hope so. you know, New Year's resolutions are kind of... Maybe falling down already. Yeah. So that's over. Oh, the visa bill just came in for Christmas. <laughs> and it's still dark and cold. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Hey, Mark and Charity, note, thank you so much for everything you're doing for your me weekend. today. <laughs> so we'll cheer up on Monday, all right? Have yourself a great weekend. We'll talk to you then. Thanks for 300 great shows.